what bubble sort will do is let's say we are solving uh, for ascending order sorting now the bubble sort let's say we are solving from left to right and the bubble sort will try to push the largest element to the rightmost side by pair comparison so the pair comparison holds a transitive relationship let's say that there are three elements a b c if you compare a and b and find the max number between a and b let's say let's say it turned out to be a then you are doing a swapping and b is placed here and you are uh, placing a here now if you compare this a with c and let's say the max number came out to be a again then you will be swapping this c here and making a come here right this is making use of the transitive relationship because you always have one element in common let's say index 0 and 1 will be compared i'm i'm giving you like one run let's see so if you start from the leftmost side and let's say uh, you are going till the last pair right so if you have n elements and if one element will always be common in a pair like something like this then how many pair comparisons will be there for one run of the entire array? n minus one. n minus one. So that will be n minus one pairs. Okay. So let's look at the first pair, five and one. And since I'm solving it for ascending order, I'm trying to push the largest element to the rightmost side. So if you do pair comparisons again, uh, five with one. So you know that I'm solving for ascending order. So definitely the largest element has to come to the end. Simple logic. So if you compare five with one, you know, five is the larger element. So you move that to the right hand side and I will uh, swap the elements. Now again, go to the next pair and check, compare this five with four. Again, four will come here because I want the larger element to the rightmost side. Compare two with five, two will come here, five will go here. And again, when you compare this five with eight, uh, then you will see that okay eight is larger so it is already at its correct uh, in its at, at its correct ordering so you don't need to do anything else and after once one uh, parsing through the array you will get the elements as one four two five eight so this will be the entire array right yes sir. and uh, by this you are guaranteeing that the that this one will be the largest element so this is now the sorted region and this entire thing is the unsorted region even though you might see that one is lying to the leftmost side and that would have come anyway to the to the beginning but it could have been any other value as well so it it tries to start the sorted region from the rightmost side and it tried uh, tries to expand the sorted region in such a way that it it consumes the entire array so the next time when we uh, do comparisons you know that there are n minus one elements so you will have n minus two pairs right yes yeah. so now when you do the comparison let's do it one with four you know that it is it is a correct ascending order ordering four with two it is not correct so you will place two here and four here compared to with uh, four with five and it it seems correct so now you are done with all the comparisons and your sorted region has expanded now right and it has expanded and you will have the elements one two four five eight are also there but then this is the sorted region and your indices are zero one two three four now you have three elements you will have two pairs in the first pair you don't do any any uh swaps and in the second one also you don't do any swaps so you will see that if you have compared all the pairs incremental uh, and all the pairs are incremental and there are no swaps then definitely your curve will always be an increasing curve, right? Increasing curve or to be specific, a non-decreasing curve. A non-decreasing curve can be like this or like this. This is a strictly increasing one. Yeah. But the values can also be equal in a non-decreasing curve. So uh, technically it should be a non-decreasing curve. So if you find that or you have a non-decreasing curve, then you will not have any swap in, in that region because the next value will definitely not be lower than the previous value so you will not have any swap and definitely that is what we want in ascending order so whenever you find that after running through all the pairs at any point of time after running through all the pairs you did not do any swap you can stop there and say that okay they are already sorted because the sorted region will definitely have the highest values they are already a non-decreasing curve right they are forming non-decreasing curve already so if you also determine that this is also forming a non-decreasing curve and you are already pushing the highest values to the right hand side 
So that will mean that the entire curve is now non-decreasing. And so you can you can optimize this algorithm by taking a swap flag where you say that okay, there was there were no swaps here. So I can just come out of the entire loop, whatever loop I was writing, and I can say that the array is already sorted. Sorted at this point of time. Now, this by writing by making this thing, you make sure that if the elements were already sorted in an array, then you will only run once and you do not find any swap. And so you just come out and say that it is already sorted or it is now sorted. And so the time complexity will be order of n in best case scenario that that it is sorted in the order which you were asking for. In the worst case scenario, you were sorting for ascending order and it is given in descending order. So it is exactly the opposite curve and you will have to do it all the time. So in that case, it will be order of n square. So you see that the previous algorithm was n square for all the cases. It didn't take care of whether it is sorted or not sorted. But this one will optimize it if it is sorted or if it finds any region which, which is sorted. So it won't do it uh, multiple times, right? So this one uh, should be preferred more than your selection sort. And this is input dependent. This algorithm, like if you have any algorithm, it is uh, any sorting algorithm, it is either input dependent or input independent. So if the algorithm gives you different, different time complexity for different, different types of input, then it is input dependent. If it doesn't take care of what is the input and just gives the same time complexity every time, then it will have the same average time, worst case, best case time. And that is input independent algorithm, right? Let me ask somebody to code it right now. So yeah, uh, since Harshita has been asking so many questions, she will help me to code this algorithm. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> you are not so confident now. <laughs> okay, tell yeah. me like, okay. you can never start. Like this is an array A, a number of elements are N. You okay. will have a, you will have a so, loop in array, right? Yeah, for I running from, um maybe zero to n minus one okay uh less than what n minus one uh, or n? n minus n minus one uh, let let it be n minus one if anyone finds any mistake then they can let us know okay then what uh, the first then... loop is for is for like how many runs you will be making across the across the same array right first run okay. you will get the largest element to the right hand side Second run, you will be getting the second largest element to the second last position. And if you think about it, I just need to sort n minus one elements and the last will be sorted, right? Yeah. So that is the reason n minus one. Yeah, and now the next thing is less than or equal to or equal to just that I is less than. I think less than, less than. So if no. it is less than n minus one, then that will be zero to n minus two, which is n minus one pairs, right? So these are, I mean, n minus one runs. So these are the runs which you are making left to right, one sweep is one run. And, and this is the second run. And this is the third run, right? Now for each run, I said that you can optimize it by using a flag, which is the swap flag. Was was mm -hmm. any swap done at this point of time? Swap is equal to? Take swap is equals to false. Nice. That swap was not done. Yeah. And now uh, we can have another loop which will be taking care of all the pairs one by one. Yeah. And you know that the pair always will start with zero. Yeah. Like the location always starts with zero yeah. and this will be, oh, sorry, I, I wrote I again. Yes, okay. zero to uh, N minus one. N minus, uh, it will go till minus. It has, to, it has to relate to I, right? Because yeah, the N, first one, yeah. N minus, N minus I, I minus one. one. Okay. And then J plus, 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 plus. because as soon as the uh, the run number increases, you know that your array is shrinking, your unsorted region is shrinking, right? Mm -hmm. So in one run, you are sorting, you are placing one element at its correct position. And so as yeah. soon as I increases your J value, the range of J will decrease, but it always starts with zero. Okay. And now we'll what? compare uh, array of I and array of J, if I of I, is okay. greater than uh, a of uh, j. j j yes only j yeah uh, yes 
and if then that one. is the case then we but not not j i j think plus one, you, right? you told it in the in the wrong way it should it should both be i uh, sorry j it should both be j j uh, because i has nothing to do with you with our parsing it is just yeah. in the parse number yes array of j and j plus one the next so number if it is the case then what then we will basically swap these two swap a at j with a at j plus one yeah and, and uh, swap becomes uh, true yeah at least you should and, have one swap yeah then so we will check, check if what uh, swap has become uh, true or not like equal to equal to false still then uh, you can break we'll out right break out of that okay, okay right that means there is so no I, yeah okay. yeah thank you for answering this so i i think this is the code and uh, you should be able to implement it now i would like to announce about our dsa live training program which will guarantee understanding of every programming concept it makes you interview ready in just three months and it will maximize your offers so that you get the best possible pay and in the best possible company you can all the sessions will be live interactive sessions so you will get the feel of a live class and you can ask all your doubts throughout the class. In order to get more details please whatsapp us on this given number.